morning, MC. We're so glad you're here today. Here's what's happening this summer. Sign up to Serve Day is today. After service, you can find out all kinds of ministry opportunities we have for you to use your gifts and talents to serve right here at Foundations Church. We hope that you find something you are passionate about and begin serving today. Our next worship night is this Friday, July the 26th, right here at 6.30 p.m. We have childcare for ages five and under, and we look forward to worshiping with you this Friday. Our next baby dedication service is August the 4th. If you would like to participate in this event with your family, please sign up online. Fall is just around the corner, and if you would like to lead a connect group in the fall, we would like you to contact Nicole at Nicole at foundationschurch.tv so you can get your training done this summer to serve in the fall. If you're new to FC or you would like to connect with us or receive prayer, you can fill out a connect card. It looks like this and is located in the seat pocket in front of you. You can fill it out, drop it in the offering, or bring it to the connect center following service. What's up, Foundations Church? I'm here to tell you about an awesome opportunity that is starting Sunday, August 4th. That is FC Grow. FC Grow is a four-week program that is all about what does it mean to follow Jesus. This year, we have had 159 people raise their hand and say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. But the cool thing is that there is so much more to understand and we don't want it to stop with just a prayer. We want it to be a lifestyle. Luke 9.23, Jesus is talking, and he says that if anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. I love that word daily because it encompasses the whole lifestyle, not just a one-time decision. And so FC Grow is for anyone. Maybe your first word was Jesus. Maybe you don't even know how to spell Jesus. This is a class for you. The cool thing about FC Grow is that if you miss one week, you can come back the next week and pick up right where you left off. We want everyone to have a chance to encounter Jesus and know who Jesus is on a personal level. This will take place upstairs. Yes, we have an upstairs. It is down the long kids hall. It's the last door on your right. We hope to see you Sunday, August 4th. Check out FC Grow during our second service. We are in a series called Foundations and this is our third week if you missed last week, um, and there was a bunch of us gone, but if you missed last week, man, go back and listen to it. Stephen Kurt did a great job talking about what it means to be a growing person that's changing, because growing equals changing, and he knocked it out of the park. Um, he talked about the FC Grow that we're starting at the beginning of August that we hope all of you can attend and go to at some point, just about, man, what does my next step, how do I live this whole thing out? It's going to be a fantastic thing that is offered during second service up there, but don't worry, you can go to first or third service and then go to that class. Today, I want to talk to you about the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's a book for me, right? I want, I want to talk to you about this. And, and for some of you, when I say the Bible, um, you're like, oh, dadgummit, um, I need to read that. That's probably what most of us think right now, like, I, yeah. Yes, I've got to read that. Some of you, when I say the Bible, you're like, boring. Um, and you wouldn't say it out loud, but that's what you think. Um, let, me, let me say this. We're talking about foundations, uh, giving you a faith that will last. And you cannot have a firm foundation if this is not active in your life. And we are a culture now that wants to make the Bible just another book. Hear me. This is not another book. This is the Word of God, and this is most of the time, not the only way, but the main way God wants to speak to you and to me is through His Word, through the Scriptures, and we are now in a culture that wants to dismiss it as another book. We want, they want to call it a hate book, some people. Um, we have churches that are now, instead of preaching scripture, preaching opinion. They want to preach what's popular instead of what is biblical. And let me say this, and I've said it a ton of times. My job is not to preach my opinion, not to preach the latest political view, isn't to preach what is cool and trendy. My job as your pastor is to preach the Word of God week in, week out um, because it will not return void. And so if you're looking for the hip pastor, I don't wear skinny jeans. These are as skinny as they get, and I don't have 
thick rim glasses. I'm not going to start brushing my hair. No, no, no. Hear me. Um, I'm going to preach the Bible, and that's what this message is about. Check this out. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 4 says this. Paul is talking to his uh, young apprentice, Timothy, and he, and he charges him with this. He says, I solemnly urge you, Timothy, in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom, preach the word of God. Be prepared. Don't, here it is. People tease me about this all the time. What do you do on Saturday nights? Go to sermoncentral.com and be like, what am I going to preach tonight? No, that is not being prepared. You do it on Monday, guys. Anyways, um, <laughs> preach the word of God. Um, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not, whether people want to listen to you or not. Patiently correct. Don't be a jerk about it, Justin. Patiently correct and rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. That's my job as a pastor. Verse 3, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching, and we are in that time. It's just, I'm just going to let you, it's not a time is coming, the time is now. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers, and they will start churches who will teach them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Hear this, they will reject the truth and chase after myths. And if you and I are going to be followers of Christ, if we're going to be disciples of Christ, hear me, we've got to make sure we're following this instead of chasing after myths. Chasing after what is cool or what, we're not chasing cool, we're following the word. And, and if we're going to be that follower of Christ, we can't just understand this point, we can't just listen to this point that I'm getting ready to share because this first point is pretty much the foundation. See what I did there? Foundations, foundation. Um, this pretty much is foundation for the rest of the sermon. And it's you've got to surrender to this point. And it's simply this. The Bible is greater than fill in your blank. Right? The Bible is greater than, not less than, greater than my feelings. The, the Bible is greater than... Fox News, what? Um, the Bible is greater than CNN. Well, they're not even Christian over there anyways. I, the Bible, I, I know I hear it all. I got it all. I'm just a middleman just telling you what I hear. Um, the Bible is greater than what the government says, right? Than the latest and greatest law that's passed, yeah, it's getting tense. Feel that? It feels good. Lean into the awkwardness. Lean into it. The Bible's greater than your experience. Well, I was hurt by the church. I understand, but the church, man, it's imperfect. But that's not the Bible. That's not the same thing. And I run into people all the time. We have a church that is full of people that have been burned by church, and we do our best not to have, let that be the experience that you have here at Foundation Church. But understand this. The Bible is greater than the cool thing, than the trendy thing, than how you feel about it. The Bible is always greater than it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and this is what I love about it. And it teaches us what to do, what is right. It doesn't, it's not just a book of what not to do. It's not just saying, hey, don't do that, but it also shows you what is right. 17, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Man, it's inspired by God. It's used to bring correction to our life, to show us when we're in the wrong, that, that just because you don't feel wrong doesn't mean that you aren't wrong, right? I can feel that I'm right, but I can be as wrong as can be. It, it corrects us, it brings correct, shows us what to do is right, and it equips you to do the things God has called you and I to do. But here's the truth about the Bible. For... A, since this is written, hundreds of years, people want to take away from the scripture and just do what they feel like doing. 
We, we want to do what looks good, what sounds good, but sometimes not necessarily what would do actual good for our life. And this isn't something that's just been happening now. In fact, in Judges, it says this. They would get it. It's like they would get a godly leader, and then they would fall back serving their idols. They would get a godly leader, and then they would fall back and serving their idols. And it says this in Judges several times. It says, and the people did whatever was right in their own eyes. And that's where we are. We live our life based on what we deem is right. But hear me, if you're a follower of Christ, this isn't a foundations thing. This isn't a Baptist thing, a Methodist thing, a Catholic thing, a Pentecostal thing. This is a biblical thing that the Bible is greater than your blank. And, and it's not just something they did in biblical times, but even one of our founding fathers did this. Thomas Jefferson, Some of, most of us have hopefully heard of Thomas Jefferson. Um, Thomas Jefferson um, had loved the Bible, loved Jesus, but he had a problem with all the miraculous supernatural things that happened in the gospel. And so Thomas Jefferson, way back several hundred years ago, took a razor or scissors and he took out every miracle. He took out the resurrection, Right? I'm like, how can you take the resurrection? That's the whole ball game right there, right? Like, I'm like, that's a pretty core part of what we're all about. He took away the miraculous birth and conception. He took all the miracles that Jesus did, and he put and pasted his own Bible, and it's called the Jefferson Bible. It's what I've got right now. It's called the Moral Teachings of Jesus Christ, the Jefferson Bible. And what's crazy, we're like, well, that's, that's awful. That's blasphemy. You're right. You're right, it's awful. And we would never do this, but you know what we do instead? We do something that I call cafeteria Christianity. Now, if you grew up going to the cafeteria after Sunday service, right? If you were rich, you went to Luby's. If you were poor, you went to Furs. Um, and so <laughs> we went to Furs. We weren't poor. My dad was just budget conscious. Um, and so, <laughs> and so I, 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 hey, I'm gonna just tell you, I don't mind a good cafeteria because, especially, I do now, but when I was a kid, dude, I got to pick. I felt like I was the big cheese all of a sudden. My mom wasn't picking something out for me. They're like, just pick what you want. I had fried chicken. I had a roll. I had green jello because that passed for broccoli because it's green. I had pudding, mac and cheese, and a piece of pie, right? Cherry pie. There's my veggie, my fruit for the day, right? Um, and, and here's the deal. All of you are like, but, but that, that's not good. That's not like good for you. Most of us in this place would agree. I don't see the problem with that diet. Um, that's not good for you, right? We understand that. We can, we can own that. I got what looked good for me. I passed right by the salad. I passed right by the baked fish. I passed right by all the vegetables and all the fruit. And I got what, I was like, I'll take some of this and I'll take some of this and I'll take some of that. And I got what looked good but wasn't necessarily good for me. And can I tell you, this is exactly what we're doing today when it comes to the word of God. And we're taking what looks good, what sounds good. Man, we, we, I'm not trying to be critical to other churches, so I'm not going to name any because I couldn't name them. Um, but <laughs> there are huge churches based on just what sounds good, but not necessarily what's doing good. Does that make sense? And we've, we come to this place as followers of Christ where we're just, I'll take some of that, but, but no, 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 no patience. I'll take some of that, but, but no, I don't want correction. And when the Bible starts correcting us, we start to not like the Bible. Because nobody likes being corrected. But if you're going to grow and if you're going to be a follower of Christ, if you're really going to be all that you should be in your relationship with Christ, and you're going to have a good, firm foundation, there's got to be correction to it. And we've got to take all of this instead of some of this. In fact, it says this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. This is the whole scripture and passage that we got this series from when Jesus is teaching on Sermon on the Mount. Though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching 
and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rain and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Verse 24 again, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. That's the beginning of that, verse 26, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Here's the deal. It's not the hearing, right? It's not the hearing that brings the firm foundation. It's the obeying it. It's the doing it. And this passage just bleeds out our second point. Don't just know it, do it. Don't just know the Word of God. Don't just know the Bible, but actually do and apply what it says. But the first part of this, and the question I have for you, is do you know it? Right? And here's where we, most of us disengage. Because most of us, when you're like, hey, have you been reading your Bible? Probably the majority of us are like, yeah, I need to really start on that. I had a New Year's resolution. I got in two days, and I just, yeah, I, I, no, I, 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 no. And, and you really, honestly, don't read it. And as a result, you don't know it. And as a result of not reading it and not knowing it, you don't do it. Because you can't do what you don't know. And, and it, it's like we're walking around in the dark, Psalms 119, verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Anytime we go, like we went on vacation this past week, um, and we were in Jackson Hole, while we were there, anytime we go to a hotel, it's not the same as my bedroom. Shocker, right? Um, and I'm, I'm old, and I like to drink water, and so I have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. That's what happens. Um, and so um, I, I get up, and when I'm walking, I don't turn the lights on because I don't want to wake up Casey, and I bump around. There is no light to guide my feet. I have no knowledge of where I'm going. My con- Some of you are like, well, can't you see? I don't have my contacts in. I didn't put my glasses on. I like adventure. Leave me alone, right? And so I'm going around like this, right? Because I have no idea. And coming back the first night, I rammed my shin into the front of the bed. I'm trying not to wake up Casey. I'm just like, mm, mother, you know, and I'm just like falling. Like I'm like, oh gosh, oh, man. I'm just praying, and I'm just like, God help me right now. But made it back in bed. We still had a good time. But here's the deal. A lot of us, this is how we're living life. Because the word of God is a lamp to your feet and a guide to your path. But if you don't have it, it can't light the way. If you, can't hi- if you don't have it and if you're not a reading it, you can't apply it. If you don't know it, it can't light the path in the way that you should go. Here's what it says also, the same chapter, verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And here's the reality of this scripture. You can't hide in your heart what you don't possess in your heart. You can't hide what you don't have. I I always give, like, food hacks. So I'm going to give all of you coffee drinkers a great food hack. Um, We have coffee at my house every day, twice a day. Not every day, but when I'm at home. Um, One's in the morning, and then my favorite coffee is right after lunch. I love it because it's not out of necessity. It's out of I want that yumminess in my mouth and tummy. Um, And so... If we are, if we've been good and we've been eating well and it's just been a great week, Casey will get double chocolate Milano's. Um, now, if you eat a Milano by itself, it's eh. But if you take that, it's got to be the double chocolate ones. Um, and I'm not going to be able to find them in the grocery store now because everybody's going to go buy them. But um, if you dip that into your coffee for like a second and then come out, bro, it is like heaven in your hand and mouth. I'm telling you, game changer. But here's the problem. We have to hide them from the kids so that they don't eat them. And if we're going to be real honest, Casey hides them from me a lot of times too because I have a little bit of self-control problem when it comes to food, and I will just eat the whole bag. And she's like, here's your two It's like I'm snack time at like preschool. Here's your cookies and juice. Go sit down now. I'm like, yeah, thanks, Mom. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> Is that we can't hide if we don't buy right? We have to possess it in order to hide it and to pull it out at a proper time when the kids are away so that we can partake in it. This is what the scripture's saying. 
Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You can't hide it if you've never bought into it and you've never possessed it in the first place. But here's the problem. I can get up here and be like, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible, and you're going to start in Genesis, and you'll get through Genesis like a boss, and you'll hit Exodus, and you're like, yeah, I remember Mo and, you know, him going and saving the Israelites out of Egypt. It's pretty cool. And then you'll hit like Leviticus, and you're going to be like slowing down, powering down. I, what is all this sacrifice? I don't understand, you know? And you'll be like, man, I just, I just can't do it. Or you start in Matthew, and you're like, man, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John are kind of, you know, kind of all blending the same. I feel like I'm reading the same thing. Here's, here's what we want to do. As a pastor, as a church, we want to help you take tangible steps that's going to help you activate the Word of God, that it can be powerful and guide your life, and that you can pull it out when you need it. And so this is what we've done. Right on your, uh, the, your live app that we've got, your version app with the live event, there's a link that says 52 Bible stories for a year. It's on our website at foundationschurch.tv. And I want all the guys, I want to charge you with this. Take the lead in this. We're going to start this tomorrow night at my house. We're going to go through, and there's one story, one passage of scripture for you to read as a couple, as a person, as a family, and talk about it. Talk about the word of God. Activate it in your life that it can be powerful and it can move. Anybody can do this. It's it's not going to be hard. It's right at foundationschurch.tv. You can click the link and it's going to show you where to find the passage and it's going to give you 52 weeks. If you miss a week, kick it back in. Now, you that have three-year-olds, your kids are going to run around, and they're not going to talk about theology, and they're not going to be talking about, are you post-trib or pre-trib, Dad? Like, that's not going to happen, right? Don't be like, shut up and listen to the Bible, kids. Shut up. You know, just calm down, because here's the thing. You're exposing them to the Bible. You're showing them that mom and dad are reading this. You're starting to do this, not for anybody else but for you, and we want to help you take a step that you can actually do, and it's right on our website because you can't apply what you don't possess. Do you know it? You may not know it. Stop feeling bad and start engaging in it, and we want to give you some launching points, but here's what Jesus said. It wasn't just enough to know it. It wasn't just enough to hear it. Don't just know it, but do it. Do it. James says this in James chapter 1, verse 22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Most of the time, it's not that we don't know what to do. We just don't want to do what we know we should do. We just don't want to do it. <clears throat> it's not that we don't know that Jesus gave us the Great Commission. Right? It's just it makes us uncomfortable. Go, on all, go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. You know, go and preach the gospel is what Jesus is saying. Go be found people that find people. Go, go do that. And he didn't say, unless that's just not your gifting. Right? He didn't say, unless you're just not comfortable. No, no, no. It's the Great Commission. But really, in the United States, it's become the Great Omission instead of the Great Commission. It's the one thing we're not doing as a church that we must do. We were called to be found people that find people. The Word of God has power when we apply it and when we do it. It's not that we know that we're not... We know we're supposed to be stewards and managers of the finances that God has given us. We know that we should, that tithing is a starting point. It's not the finish line, but most of us are tipping God rather than tithing to him. It's not that we don't know better. We just don't want to do it. It's not that we know we shouldn't serve. We know we should serve. We know that God's put gifts in our life that it's to be used for his kingdom and not just our own. It's just, we don't, we just push it off and we, we justify and we get, hear me. And I say this all the time. It's not not enough just to have the information, but information plus application brings transformation. Information, the knowledge of the word, and the application of the word is what brings transformation to your life. Don't just know it, but do it. And here's a challenge I would give you. It's our last thing today. Here, here's what I would challenge every single one of us to do. Stop treating the Bible as a 30-day trial. Long-term application brings long-term benefits. Stop treating the Bible like Oprah Winfrey and Weight Watchers, 
right? It's what we do. Well, I'll get into this and we'll see how far we get, right? And I'm going to pick God speak to me through that word. You know, and you're like, I'm in Ecclesiastes, dadgummit. Um, you know, you just don't, don't treat the Bible and the Word of God like a 30-day trial. Long-term application brings long-term blessing. Reading the Bible and being in the Word is a discipline, not an instant payoff. But we are a culture that expects an instant payoff. Right, we're a culture that expects an instant payoff. But here's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is a living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. And I want us to stop there. You can keep reading if you want the rest of it. Some of you are. Stop it right now. You know, but um, hear me. It, it's the word of God, it's a living and it's active and it's powerful, making it operative, energizing, and effective. That's what the Word of God does. And this isn't just a book. This is what the Word of God wants to do in your life. But so many of us were like, well, I've tried it God's way and it didn't get any better, so I'm just going to quit. Here, here when, when you think of retirement and you think of l- retirement and investing in retirement, um, we have a retirement specialist. He owns his own company. He's awesome. If you need his number, you can talk to me after service, Stephen Frank. And I used him in first service. I just said, I don't show up at Stephen Frank's office and say, hey, Stephen, I'm going to invest for three months, $500 each month. And I expect you to make me a millionaire, bro. Work your magic. Well, I started in my twenties, like work. He would be like, you're crazy. That is not going to work. It takes a long-term investment to bring long-term benefit to where you want to be. It's when you start investing every month for the, over the course of the long haul of your life that you look back and you're like, okay, I can live at age 65, age 70 pretty comfortably because I've been investing in it over the long term on a consistent basis. It's not that I expect something to happen in 45 days in 90 days because I've been trying it this way. No, no, no. It's a long-term investing. Long-term benefits come from being in the Word of God. And some of us, that's what we've got to get our mind around, is that you're not just, you're not just trying this for a short term. And, well, I tried it for 45 days, and I haven't seen my finances get any better. I tried it 90 days, and my relationship's still a mess. Hear me. Man, if you, start in, if you start applying the Word of God to your life, it's not that you're going to see a major, massive difference in 60 days. You might, and you might not. You may get to the end of the year, and you may be like, man, I saw some things, but not near as what I was expecting. Here's the promise. The Word of God will not return void. Your Word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. Psalms 119. Here's what this is saying. That if I apply this to my life over the long haul of my life on a consistent basis, as I get to the end of my life, I get to when I'm 99 years old. See, I did that for all you old people. I got to where I'm 99 years old. I come to the end of it and I can look back and I don't have regrets because this safeguarded it. I I look back and and my my regrets are limited and, and man, there was... This word of God worked as a guardrail in my life and helped me make a foundation to build the rest of my life on so that I get here and I see the long-term benefits of applying this on a consistent basis. But the truth and the reality is this. Some of us here today, it's been rough. It's been rough lately. It's been hard lately. And you're sitting here and going, man, I I just, I've been applying, I've been reading, I've been applying, it doesn't seem like anything's getting better. Man, I'm just, I'm ready to throw the towel in. I'm ready to quit because it seems like every prayer that I pray doesn't get answered. It seems like I'm I'm reading the Bible just and I'm doing what God says. And it still seems like, man, I'm just having a rough go at it. This past week, we went... um, I told you to Jackson Hole, and there, there was something that we got to do that was a a bucket list moment for me. 
um, and I had to convince my wife to do this. Um, it is whitewater rafting, and we got signed. My, Casey did not want to do this. I'm just going to be real honest, and I was like, okay, use your skills as an orator and a manipulator, orator and manipulator, right? Um, and so I was like, Casey, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun, and we go to this to the place that we're getting ready to do, and we, we got like the big, massive, like it looked like a battleship raft. I mean, it's huge. And we show up to the place, and they're like, are you the Graves Party of Two? And I'm like, yes, we are. And they, and I did not do this on purpose. Some of you are like, you did too. I promise I didn't. Um, we show up, and they're like, Mr. Graves, we have an exciting opportunity for you today. We would like to upgrade you to our smaller raft that is more bumpy, more adventurous, um, a lot more water. And I'm like, yes, yes, let's do it. And Casey's like, eyes are watering up. I'm like, but, but it's up to you, babe. It's totally up to you. But if you don't, it's going to crush my life goals. But do you go ahead. And she's looking, and she's like, oh, hmm. and she's looking at me, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And she's like, fine, we'll do it. And I'm like, yes, I, I love you, babe. Like, I love you. I'm so glad I married you 20 years ago, you know. And, and so we, we're, we're, she's, like, she's like, am I going to fall off? Am I going to drown? They're like, well, we can't promise you that. You know, like, I'm like, you're not helping, just say no, right? Like, did you not learn any frame from dare and just say no? And so um, we get on the raft, and Casey's petrified. She's asking everybody, but this is like half way down, right? Casey's in the middle right there with the sunglasses, and notice she is all grins. Two seconds before this, this is what our raft looks like. Right. You can't see us. And like during this moment, I'm like, woo, right? Like I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Um, and here's why I'm telling you this story. How do you go from this, and can you put the other picture up, to that? Our guide told us this. He says, when we hit the rapids, and he goes, man, they're going to overwhelm you. They're going to blind you. You're not going to be able to see where to go. But if you're going to have stabilization, the very thing that stabilizes you and gets you through is to keep rowing. It's just to keep rowing. And some of you, man, you feel like you've been applying this and you've been praying, and you're just not leading you where you want, and things have gotten rough, and you feel overwhelmed. Can I tell you this morning, man, keep applying the Word of God, keep praying, and just keep rowing, because doing that very thing is the very thing that will stabilize you, that will get you through the rough time and lead you to a time where you're smiling again, you're praising again, you're laughing again. It's going to be rough at times, and in those rough times, my God, don't quit, but keep rowing because it's the very thing keeping you in your boat. It's the very thing stabilizing you. Keep applying the word of God because the promise is this, that his word will not return void. It always does what it says it will do. Keep rowing. And hear me, guys, we've got to not just pick and choose, but we got to apply this. I got to shut up. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. I thank you, man, for your word, for your instructions that are here. Not, it's, it's not a not to-do list. It's not a book of just rules, but it's a book that empowers us, that equips us to do the good things that you have called us to do. And so, Lord, I pray for every single one of us in this place. That God, if we don't know it, that we would dive into your word. That we would start gaining knowledge of your word. God, if we're not applying it, that we would not just hear your words and not obey it like the foolish person, but we would hear and obey. We would hear and apply. God, God I, I just ask that in this place today, that you would build your church and that we would build a foundation that's not based on trends. God, that's not based even just on preaching, but God, that our foundation would be based on your word that does not return void. And so, Lord, I pray that, man, if we've got work to do, we wouldn't feel guilty. We wouldn't beat ourselves up as we leave this place, but we would engage in what you have given us. God, this is a gift. Lord, for those of us that were here and it's just rough, God, that we keep rowing. 
We keep applying, we keep moving, we keep rowing because it's that very thing to stay into your word, to keep applying your word, to keep believing your word, to keep standing on your word that stabilizes us. God, I ask, move and work in us today and let us be hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name I pray with heads bowed. Watch full sermons at youtube.com slash foundationschurchtulsa or catch our podcast on any podcasting app.